Captain, let me tell you a little story. You remember when I fell through your ceiling? Yes, that was six hours ago. It was, I admit, a disastrous failure. But it gave me the idea for Herman, the friendly janitor you met. With Herman, I commenced the perfect crime. I caught you as Herman. But you didn't catch Rosa. Come out of there. As it turns out, our friend Rosa is great at picking locks. Does not surprise me. No, me neither. Of course, I had to find a way to get her out of your office without you seeing her. So I created a diversion, not mistimed, perfectly timed, so she could escape unseen. What about the pigeons? Oh, the gray pigeons? They were a red herring, thank you. Their only purpose was to draw you into the copy room while two members of my team broke into your locked office. So now I had a way into your office and an open cabinet. All that was left was for the royal babies to steal your keys. Yes, but you didn't need the keys. The cabinet was already unlocked. You needed a way into the safe. And I got it. You were so concerned with getting your keys back, you didn't even notice the sergeant steal your phone. That's right. Even the sergeant's on my side. I then had Charles dust your screen cover for prints. The greasiest smudges revealed the four numbers you used the most. The four numbers in your passcode. Based on your advanced age, I assume that you use the same passcode for everything, your phone, your email, and of course, you're safe. That would be a fair assumption. It was at that point that I bumped into a girl dressed as a sexy robot and we got our flirt on hard. Sup? Sup? Jake Peralta. And how was flirting part of the plan? Oh, it wasn't, it just ruled. And that brings us to five minutes ago, when Amy came to your office and told you that I'd been arrested. I knew she's the only one you would believe because frankly, she's usually too lame to take part in these kinds of things. And as you walked over here, Charles awkwardly stuffed himself through your window and opened your safe. We had the four numbers of your code, which meant there were 24 possible combinations for Charles to try. That could take up to four minutes, which is why I really dragged out this explanation. I mean, really stretched it. I don't know if you noticed, but there were times where I was like, what am I even talking about? This isn't, oh. But now, four minutes is up, which means Boyle is either on the other side of that door holding your medal, or I've lost. Well, Captain, it seems that Jake isn't the only person you underestimate. 20 seconds to spare. Game over, Captain. Check me. I think you mean checkmate. You really need to learn how to play chess. How did you get everyone to help you? I appealed to their sense of teamwork and camaraderie with a rousing speech that would put Shakespeare to shame. For too long we've been put down, ridiculed, made to wear ties, but no more for today. We defeat him! And that worked? No, oh no, not at all. My speech did not inspire them. Come on. So I bribed them. I told them that if we pulled this off, I would do all of their paperwork. And since you're doing all my paperwork. I'm impressed, Peralta. Well done. Thank you, sir. In fact, the thing that you failed to see, Captain, teamwork is exactly Captain? what provided our success. Sir? He's not coming back. Talk now. You seem upset. Well, here's how the story goes. Remember that little Halloween bet that we made? You probably don't even remember it was so early this morning. Any hoozle, it turns out the criminal I hired to lift your watch was not trustworthy, and I ended up contracting tuberculosis of the foot and subsequently losing your death watch. But in the end, I like to think this whole thing is gonna bring us closer together, and isn't that what it's really all about? Merry Christmas! What are you saying? My watch is right here. No. I made a switch, that's a fake. No. This one's a fake. What? No. What? No. What? No. You were behind all this? You played me. Like Franz Blueheim plays the flute. But how? I've been planning this theft for three months. I know, but I've been planning it for a year. Last Halloween, after you won the bet, I went back to my office to do everyone's paperwork, but I did no paperwork. I started to plot my revenge. I began by creating a word cloud. But how could you possibly have known I was gonna try and steal your watch? I knew you would try to take something important to me. During the year, I drew your attention to my watch. You're eight minutes late. You're 14 minutes late. You're three minutes early in Chicago. 
You annoyed me into stealing it. Exactly. Now you had a target, but you needed a plan. Fortunately, it walked through the door, handcuffed to Diaz. Scumbag pickpocket is Dan McCreary. He can take anything off of anyone. Anything? Anyone? The look on your face, priceless. I put McCreary into my employee immediately. Fast forward to this morning. You commenced your plan. McCreary stole my watch and then replaced it with a replica. And while you celebrated, McCreary put my watch back in my pocket. The watch never left my person. Dun, dun, dun. I can see that you're enjoying this. Not nearly as much as I enjoyed phase two. Do. While you met with McCreary, Santiago placed a fire hydrant in front of your car, which she then towed away. Next, I had to take Charles out of the equation. He had a badge and a gun, and he would do anything to help you. Enter a parade of drunks that separated the two of you long enough for Terry to kidnap Charles. Then, two bears spilled their drinks on you and stole your wallet. Those bears, Scully and Hitchcock. I can't put my head off! If Terry kidnapped Charles, how did Charles tell me to get on the party bus? Eight months ago, at a morning briefing, I told the squad that a group of thieves was targeting party buses so I could record Charles saying, Jake, party bus! Toot toot! Get on board! I knew Boyle would never knowingly betray me. With your jacket and shoes gone, you didn't look like a cop, but you still had your badge. That is, until you entered the party bus. Rosa's feline dancing distracted you as a mysterious partier stole your badge on Halloween. It was you in the mask, you sly son of a bitch. Well done. But I do have to ask, those guys at the impound, did they really smash my car? No, in fact, I had them wash it. <laughs> Good one, Captain. You can't wash a car. So how'd you convince the whole squad to betray me? What'd you offer them? I asked them if they wanted to embarrass you, and they instantly said yes. Not gonna lie, that turns me on a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, in addition to the five weeks of free overtime, I believe I'm owed one more thing. Yes. Here we go. One second. <laughs> Very well. Captain Raymond Holt, you are an amazing police captain slash genius. But be warned, I started planning next year's heist just this minute. Good. Then you're only three months behind. You sick son of a bitch. I don't understand what is happening. Allow me to explain. Amy and I were ahead of you the whole time. No, you weren't part of this. Get back over to the loser side, loser. All right, worth a shot. So how'd you pull it off? Well, it all started when I went to tell Jake how badly he hurt my feelings, and he yelled at my breasts. Oh, boy, I am not going to come off well in this story. Nope. Remember when you set off the witch? <laughs> it made Captain Holt flinch, which was weird since his door was closed, but not weird since he actually heard it over a bug he planted at your desk. It was in an old muffin that you never threw in the trash. That's why people throw away garbage. How are we together? <laughs> Anyway, I tapped into the bug's frequency, so I had ears on Jake. I needed to know what Holt was up to. That's where Hitchcock came in. I masterminded the entire plan. You did one small thing, and I had to explain it to you like 45 times. He left a tiny crack in the blind so I could read the captain's lips. Sharon and your kids will distract Jake. They'll be here at 9.30 sharp. My waffle xylophone on the cheese man. What? My lip reading is not flawless. Now that I knew your plan, it was simple to disrupt. While Scully gracefully moved the witch, I got into character. Holt triggered the witch, which brought Jake into the room. And I threw the crown in the trash can. Exactly as I planned. Then I sent you all here, placed an out of order sign on the perfectly functional elevator, made you all walk up 31 flights of stairs and vomit twice. Actually, it was four times if you count all the stairwell stuff. You thought I was just Holt's lackey. And you thought I was just Jake's girlfriend. Well, I'm my own person, capable of making my own decisions. And I decided to humiliate you both. Well, you did. And it was awesome. One last question. Where's the crown? Oh, it's at Shaw's Bar, the official site of my coronation. All hail the crown of destiny. <laughs> and all hail she who wears it, Amy Santiago, the Queen. Queen of the Nine-Nine. 
I believe there's something else you both need to say. Gladly. Amy, Amy Santiago, Santiago is an amazing detective slash genius. Yeah. Drinks are on us. Yeah. Nope. Drinks are on me. Yeah! The Oscar for Best Liar goes to you. That's not an Oscars category. What's going on? Not to be harsh, Sarge, but you're setting a terrible example for your daughters, and they're going to grow up to be total failures. You take that back. No, she's right, Jeff. It's your children are doomed. Where's the plaque? For the last time. I don't know. I've been working here the whole time. Ask them. Well, actually, well, we both fell asleep. And Jeffords never woke us up. Coincidence? I don't need this. You're not going anywhere. Damn, Rosa! Ah! He's trying to get away. Everyone start panicking. Get someone locked the door. Stop, losers! I have the real plaque. Mm, mm. Gina! Of course, it all makes sense, except for the parts I don't understand and the fact that I still kind of think Terry did this. Nope, it was all me. Three weeks ago, Captain Holt asked me to order a plaque that read, the ultimate detective slash genius. I did it, and I ordered three copies and a statue of Tyrese riding a dolphin. Is that relevant? To my life, yes. Once I had the plaques, I manipulated Captain Holt into choosing Boyle as his partner. All it took was six bottles of dish soap. See, this is what happens when Jake tries to wash dishes by himself. It's like he's helpless without Boyle. Yes, he is helpless without Boyle. And you fell for my trap like a greedy little rat. Easy. Yes, it was easy. In the next phase of my plan, a quote-unquote skating accident. But you knocked out your two front teeth. False teeth. Fake blood. I lost my real teeth at Ben Sutton's birthday party in fourth grade. Oh, you made sure I didn't remember that. It was minute five of seven minutes in heaven with Todd Cohen when he bumped the wall and the bowling ball fell on my face. Maybe I just wasn't at that party. Once I had faked the skating mishap, I swapped out a dummy plaque for the real one. Then I left to go to the dentist. And you convinced your dentist to help you carry out the rest of the heist? No. Of course not. Go ahead. I came back wearing the perfect disguise to make sure I was never noticed by anyone. Something so drab and uninspiring. It feels like it's going to be a dig on me. I wore Amy's clothes. There it is. This is your doing, you and your male prostitute. Bill is not a male prostitute, I don't think. That suit is not drab. It has a fun salmon lining. No, Amy, it made me invisible. And now that I had that power, every time one of you stole a plaque, I replaced it with a fake. And no one had any idea until the lights went out, revealing a secret message. Heists are dumb. Then we raced in here to blame Terry, and you trapped us. But how did you know he was going to say heists are dumb? Terry says that about everything. Everyone should wear suspenders. Belts are dumb. People should swim forward. The backstroke is dumb. 30 grams of fat. Hummus is dumb. And now here you all are, locked up behind the glass like a bunch of loser fish. I bet you're wondering why I did it. Because you wanted to win? No. I had a loftier goal in mind. Can you do me a favor and tell me what that says right there? The ultimate detective slash genius. Detective. Can you imagine what that word sounds like to someone who's not a detective? Discriminatory. It's worse than segregation. Uh -huh. Too far? Sorry. But I think I've proved a point, and that's why we're changing the name of the plaque forever! To what? Gina Lametti is the ultimate human slash genius. Thank you. And now I'd like to say a few words. You talked for like an hour when you had us locked in that interrogation room. I'm a fair ruler. Your comment has been heard. But seriously, you guys, I just want to say, I freaking love you losers. Happy Halloween. Happy, Happy Halloween. Halloween. <laughs> Hello, Jacob. Ah! Ames, what are you doing here? Why aren't you out looking for the belt? You and I both know the belt never left the precinct. I don't know that. Nobody knows that. I kept thinking, how did anyone swap my key? And then it hit me. They didn't. They swapped the safe. One of the handmaids, I'm assuming fake Charles, took my safe and then, of Amy, deposited a look-alike. Why did you give fake Charles so he'd help you? Nothing. In fact, he gave me something. The power of financial freedom. I invested in a pyramid scheme. It's no time to go into it right now. OK. So, while we all tried to figure out who had the real key, Fake Charles broke into the safe, removed the tracker, and led Terry and the whole squad on a wild goose chase. My only question is, which box is the belt in? Well, good luck figuring it out, because the clock is tick, tick, talking. It's that one. No! The dust pattern on top doesn't match its neighbors. 
You see, Jake, I'm always gonna be one step ahead of you. You've lost the ability to surprise me. You're just plain boring. Again, weird take on our very loving relationship. And it's midnight, so I guess I'm an amazing human slash genius. Yeah. Although, you might want to read the inscription on that there belt. Why? Oh, no. What does it say? Amy Santiago, will you marry me? Surprise. I'm so confused. I don't know what's happening right now. I'm so confused. I don't know what's happening right now. Title your sex tape. Oh my God, I'm shaking. I'm definitely gonna cry. Title of your sex tape. Wait, is this really happening? Is this part of the heist? If this is part of the heist, I will dump you so hard. No, please, Ames, like, it's really happening, okay? It's not part of the heist, I promise. This is real. It is? Yeah. Okay, here goes. Ames, I love you. I love how smart you are. I love how beautiful you are. I love your face and I love your butt. I should have written this down first. No, no, it's okay. Go on. I love how much you pretend to like Die Hard. I like the second one. You don't have to. Okay. Yeah. You're kind and you're funny and you're the best person I know and the best detective. Also for reals, I love your butt. I love yours too. Gross. <laughs> Amy Santiago. Will you marry me? Jake Peralta, I will marry you. <sighs> I love you so much. Hey, Jerkos! This little tramp escaped, so that ought to teach. Did you just. Mm hmm. And did you say. Mm hmm. To Jake and Amy. To Jake and Amy! Great stuff, great stuff. So, since Peralta altered the Cumberbund, no one really won the heist this year. Is that what everyone's thinking? Captain. Right, right. Sorry, not the time. I'm so happy for you both. Technically, there was no winner. Wait, where is everyone? Where are all the desks? What is happening? What's happening is... You all suck! <laughs> Song. Wait, Terry has the bracelet? That's right. Me and my teammate Terry won. We fooled you all. You didn't do shit. Okay, well, neither did Jordan's teammates, but they still got rings. All right, fine. Just tell us how you did it. Well, first, for my plan to work, it had to happen on a day when I could control everything. I couldn't let it be Halloween. You faked the gas explosion. Yeah, stupid actors almost blew it. What was with that moaning, Trent? I thought you studied at the Lee Strasberg Institute. Doesn't mean anything. They just take your money. Oh, that is a huge relief. I felt so bad about poking that guy's wound to make sure it was real. You should still feel bad about that. No, it was all fake. I'm totally absolved. Continue with your story, Sarge. I knew you'd suggest a heist as a distraction for my lieutenant exam. Then all I had to do was sit back and watch as everyone took things way too far. But how'd you know we'd get so out of hand? I spent the last six months sowing the seeds of conflict. Man, I am so sick of Jake saying he's the only two-time Halloween heist winner. I'm the, I'm the only two-time two -time Halloween, Halloween heist winner. winner. I can't believe everyone says you're not helpful during the Halloween heist. Just because they all think your fingers are too big. We'll show them. Thanks for inviting me over for dinner. Boy, that's hung in a real prominent place, isn't it? Not for long. I was manipulated? Sorry, Kevin. Don't apologize to him, Terry. It's his first heist. He needs to learn. Keep going. Well, after I got everyone acting like maniacs, all I had to do was make you feel bad by knocking myself out. The banner. But how did you learn my voice command? I didn't have to. I sold you the damn thing! No. And I want it to unfurl when I say you all suck. Absolutely. Pleasure, Pleasure doing, doing business, business with you. you. The pleasure was all mine. <sighs> That's gonna work. I spent $1,800 on that thing. You did? Amy, stop interrupting. Terry's doing his big speech. Anyway, once my fake concussion was on display, I created the perfect distraction for my partner to do his job. 
Cheddar, you duplicitous bitch. I've been training Cheddar for months. Wow, what a fun improvised song! When I swapped the Hootsworths, I put a magnetic collar on them. From there, Cheddar followed us all the way to one police plaza, where he hand-delivered the bracelet to me right outside this room. But wait, what about the lieutenant's exam? Aren't you supposed to be taking it right now? Hell no. I took that thing weeks ago, and I passed. I'm already a lieutenant. You are? That's incredible! Lieutenant Jeffords. This is amazing. I'm so proud of you, Terry. <laughs> All right, you've overstepped now, Bill. Yeah, it's weird you're here, Bill. <laughs> is this still going on? Was it Terry? No, was it me? Wait, if you're Terry, then that must be... What's up, losers? Rosa, that was amazing. It was not amazing. She didn't stay handcuffed to her partner. She's disqualified. We'll reset and start over on the next holiday. Earth Day and Earth Day heist. It's perfect. Wrong. Rules said I couldn't undo the cuffs, and I didn't. Oh, not fair. I didn't know I could cut off Peralta's hand. I'll file that away for next year. Actually, I think we're one and done on the whole handcuff concept. This is incredible. How'd you do it, Rosa? Well, back on Halloween, I knew Jake would make the first move. And I had to be ready. You were hiding in the fog. It wasn't Holt that put that chair in my pathway. No, I did. I wanted to be the one who was responsible for our victory. What? We already lost. There's no point in trying to maintain team around now. Dick. Anyway, I knew Cheddar would be making an appearance. Oh, yes. everyone loves to see Cheddar. He's here a lot. I never bring in Arlo. Who? Exactly. I spent every morning for the last year giving Cheddar a taste for ham. Oh, so that's why he got so thick and ended up on Chunky Pups. I submitted his photo. And once you put Cheddar on a diet, all I had to do was mark the gems with a little of that sweet ham taste. Why did you want Cheddar to swallow the gems? Because I needed to delay things. The second part of my plan took place on Valentine's Day, which went perfectly. Well, I wouldn't say perfectly. Scully swallowed the gems. Because I tricked him into it. It wasn't hard. Pretty much used the same Cheddar ham playbook. Table ham. Seven days in a row. So now I have to think twice before I eat food I find lying around. Thanks a lot. I marked the gems with ham again, and everything pushed to Easter when I could finally get rid of Scully as my partner. Doctor, I'm willing to pay you to tell Norm Scully not to participate. Participate? No, no, no. Norm Scully should not be participating in any activities. He could die. I'll go call him right now. Now, I finally had a teammate whose hand I could cut off. Just needed a little help from Terry. Boy, that thing's pretty heavy, huh? Did you bring the tools? But you were retired. You were loving your smoothies. Yeah, but after a while, I felt left out. And if I'm being honest, smoothies weren't even that good. I wonder why that was. Maybe it's because I ham your smoothie. Am I the only one who didn't get fed ham this year? Wait, how did you know about Jake's bunny plan? You weren't the only one listening in on this therapy. Of course the bunny should have glasses. I just can't believe I didn't come up with it myself. Oh, you know what? Betty Rubble also gives me a bone. You guys were listening in on my therapy? That feels like a real violation. Thanks, Jake. Jake, this is Rose's moment. Yeah, man, go tell it to your fake therapist. She's fake? Anyway, then I grabbed the gems, jumped off the roof, wrote my name in flames. Wait, why did you keep delaying the heist? Couldn't you have just won at Halloween? Oh, I did. These are the real Halloween gems. I switched them out before Cheddar found them. I also won on Valentine's Day. What is happening? I switched those gems out before I gave them to Scully. And then I won today. So while you nerds are always arguing about who the only two-time champion is, Me. I just became the first three-time champion. I guess there's just one thing left to do. DeRosa Diaz, an amazing human slash genius. DeRosa Diaz! Are we too late? Did you get the tube? No, it's somewhere in this building. Brooklyn Storage Solutions. Wait a second. I know this place. Yes, this is where we worked our first case with Captain Holt. That's right. It's a meaningful location. Tonight is my victory lap. I plan the perfect goodbye. You have got to be kidding me. You see, the whole heist was a ruse for the perfect goodbye plan. I mean, it wasn't that perfect. A real perfect goodbye would have had... Sentimental gifts for everyone. Damn it! Well, just tell us how you did it. Everything hinged on Jeffords. I needed him to drop out of the heist so he'd have access to everyone's secrets, which is why I set up a fake interview for him. You were working with Williams? But he locked us in his office. Which was critical to me gaining your trust, so you tell me where the tube was hidden. Terry's really... Armed with that information, I texted Kevin, who retrieved the tube and handed it off to a person who lured you all here. And that person was a dog, and that dog was Cheddar. Hold up. That big speech about how I'd make a great captain, that was all a lie? No, no, I meant every word of it. In fact, it's exactly what I said to the real Williams two weeks ago. It's part of the reason he decided to make you the new captain of the 9-9. Wait, what? Is this fake, too? Y'all need to cut the and be honest with me. This is my life we're talking about. You want to know if it's real? Open your gift and find out. 
A bag of fish? What? No, it's supposed to be a captain's bars. The fish are my present to Scully. They're the kind that eat the dead skin off your feet. Ooh, they're gonna have a feast tonight. But wait, that's not Terry's bars. What's in the real tube? Wireless headphones? They're AirPods. They're my gift for everyone. What? But you told me not to get people AirPods. You said everyone already has headphones. Yeah, so you wouldn't buy them and I would get all the glory. Wow, great gift, Amy. Come on! But if I don't have the winning tube, who does? I do. Yet another surprise reveal again. So, my plan was simple. The best way to win is to sit back, watch everyone else, and then choose your moment. But to do that, I needed people to think I was gone. That's a trick she learned from me. During the fourth type, universally considered the Beth type. You were so eager to think I'd drop everything and chase after Adrian. So you don't want to end up with Pimento? No, but you believed it because you all think for someone to be happy, their story has to end with marriage and kids. I mean, I believed it because you told me and I trust you. Whatever, Breeder. Anyway, with nobody watching me, I was able to figure out what Holt was up to. And then I had my other partner intercept Cheddar. Who's that? It's me, Bill. <gasps> Surprise reveal. So let's crown me the grand champion of the 99. A six-month subscription to the Rosetta Stone? It's my present for Peralta. Your present to me is school? I'm glad you're leaving. All right, who has the real tube? I do. What are you doing, Bill? I'm sorry, but this is your fault for ending the heist. They're my only source of income. You're still my best friend. Goodbye. Bill! He's gone. We're trapped. Oh, yeah! Oh, yes! Now go through that wall. I'm not doing any more walls, Jake. We're free. Fair enough, I had to ask. All right, I got Bill on the GPS. Huh, that's weird. What? Where'd he go? Are you sure he came back to the precinct? The tracker must be broken. There's no one here. Wrong, Captain. I'm here. Michael Hitchcock, the grand champion of the 9-9. Hitchcock? Well, this doesn't feel right. I bet you're all wondering how I pulled it off. Not really, but I guess that's a tradition. The key to the whole plan was that I never really retired or moved to Brazil. I've been living in the beaver trap this whole time. OK, but what was the rest of the plan? Oh, we had not come up with it. But then Bill came by and offered to sell me the tube for 40 bucks, and I won. Pretty good stuff. Now, crown me. Ugh, this stinks. OK. <sighs> Michael Hitchcock, you are an amazing human slash genius and the grand champion of the 9-9. Why is your head so sweaty? Oh, because that's actually butt skin from a botched hair transplant, so they're more porous. I can't believe this is how it ends, with Hitchcock's sweaty butt head. I told myself I wouldn't cry. Ah, Jake, sorry I didn't get your perfect goodbye. Yeah, this whole thing did kind of turn into a scalding hot mess. But to be honest, I think I just wanted a big dramatic moment so that I wouldn't feel sad, because goodbyes are inherently sad. They mean that something's ending, and this one is especially sad, because what we had was so great. But it's not all sad, right? We're moving on to things that we love. And we'll always have the memories of our times together, even though Hitchcock won the heist, which makes me so mad I want to swallow my own tongue and die. It's a disgrace. Anyways, I say we hang out, have a drink, and enjoy all of us being together one last time. To the squad. To, to the, the squad. squad. You just drank some <clears throat> Why?